You don't know my story All the things that I've been through You can't feel my pain What I had to go through to get here You'll never understand my praise Don't try to figure it out Because my worship My worship is for real Because my worship My worship is for real You don't know my story All the things that I've been through You can't feel my pain What I had to go through to get here You'll never understand my praise don't try to figure it out because my worship my worship is for real because my worship my worship is for real i've been through too much to worship him I've been through too much night to worship him I've been through too much night to worship him I've been through too much night to worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my worship is for real, hallelujah. Hallelujah, my worship is, say, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, my worship is for real, say, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, my worship is for real. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you today. Good morning, church family. We are excited to have you to be a part of the St. Luke AME Church family this Sunday morning. The officers and members of St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church welcome you to join us in this worship service. And I'm so grateful for you this morning for connecting with us and worshiping with us in our virtual worship experience. Amen. It's giving time in the sanctuary. Amen. The sanctuary is wherever you are worshiping and magnifying the name of the Lord. Here at St. Luke, we operate on the stewardship principle of give, save, live. That is, we give our first 10% to God. We save 10% for ourselves and then we live off the rest. And throughout 2021, 
We are engaging in the Give, Save, Live Challenge. And that is we are making a commitment to increase our giving by any amount on a monthly basis. And then we are making the commitment to save at least $2,500. We are taking baby steps towards financial freedom. Because I want you to be able to jump for joy. Hallelujah. Because who the sun sets free in every aspect of your life is free indeed. And so we thank you so much for your generosity. We thank you for your commitment. We're praying for 100% participation from the St. Luke family and friends in the Give, Save, Live Challenge. Amen. Shall prosper, it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work god will do what he said he would do he will stand by his word he will come through god will do what he said he would do he's not a man that he should lie he will come through god will do what he said he would do he will stand by his word he will come through god will do what he said he would do he's not a man that he should lie he will come through no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work it just won't work it just won't work no 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 it won't work it just won't work it just won't work no 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 it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work praise god from whom all blessings flow i am pastor marlin and I have the blessed honor and privilege of serving right here at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church as the senior pastor of all of the officers here at St. Luke. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. 
thank you so much to our praise team for leading us this morning and ushering in the presence of God. We have come to worship and we have come to magnify the name of the Lord. And it is our practice here at St. Luke that we not be selfish with God's word. We understand that God's word has the power to transform lives. And so every Sunday we get our virtual evangelism on. I want to encourage you to do that right now. I want to encourage you to invite someone to come worship with us. Share the link, send a text message, and let somebody know it's about to go down at St. Luke. Come on and magnify the name of the Lord. We have come to worship. We have come to lift uh, the name of our Savior. Uh, before we get into the word this morning, there are just a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. Our presiding elders appreciation, presiding elder Johnson, first lady Phyllis appreciation will take place on August 14th. That is August 14th at 6 p.m. Encouraging all uh, those who are able to participate and to uh, celebrate our leadership uh, to be a part of that celebration and appreciation. On August 16th, uh, our fourth quarterly conference has been rescheduled. Uh, we rescheduled it for August 16th. It will take place at 6.30 p.m. Thank you for those who have already submitted your reports. We were ready to go last week, uh, but we did. And we will resume our fourth quarter on August 16th at 6.30 p.m. I want to remind all of you that uh, your pastor has the distinct privilege and honor of being able to lead the Connectional Church School on August 29th, and I'm inviting all of St. Luke to participate uh, in this wonderful opportunity of breaking the bread of life, uh, not just with the members here at St. Luke, but throughout the connection. So I invite you to share in church school on August 29th. As you know, we are preparing for in-person worship. I don't know about you, but I get excited and more and more excited each time I think about coming back together in the sanctuary to worship once again, it's been a long time since we've been in the house of the Lord. It's not been a long time since we've worshiped. Amen. The Bible does declare that even though the enemy will try, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And so that we haven't been able to meet here in the sanctuary doesn't mean we haven't been able to worship. But I'm excited about the opportunity to worship once again in the house of the Lord. And as we prepare to do that, I'm asking you to begin to pray. I'm asking you to pray right now for a fresh anointing. Share with you on last week that as the ushers met in preparation, we made the declaration that before we usher in the people of God, we were going to usher in the presence of God. On our weekly prayer call, we have been praying for the presence of God to be present in the sanctuary on August 22nd. And I want you to stand in prayer with us. I want you to pray until heaven hears. I want you to pray until the anointing falls. I want you to pray so that when people walk through the doors of the church, they will have no doubt in their minds that they are in the presence of the true and living God. I want this place to be so saturated with the anointing of God that as soon as you lift your hand, you get healed. That as soon as you lift your hand, breakthrough happens. I want you to pray with me, saints. Hallelujah for miracle signs and wonders. I'm excited about coming back into the sanctuary for worship. Not only are we coming back into the sanctuary, but we're also coming not only standing on holy ground, but we're also going to be standing on new carpet. Thank you so much for all those who already gave. We are so close. We are so close to having the carpet being fully paid for. You ought to say amen. God has been generous through you and through your gifts, and we are so close. And we're asking those who can to contribute. And if you've already contributed, but you can stretch just a little bit more, we're asking you to do that. We are so close to where we need to be. And I'm excited that when we come in, we'll come in to carpet that has already been paid for. Amen. I got to say thank you to our youth. Thank you to our YPD. Thank you to Sister Kizzy for her leadership. Uh, the youth were here uh, this past week and they were cleaning out the fellowship hall. They were moving out 
up tables. They were doing the heavy lifting so that we can move the pews that are sanctuary. We can move them to the fellowship hall so that when they come and put the carpet in, uh, they won't have any problem doing it. Thank you. Our young people are getting us ready for worship. Amen. The Bible says, and a child shall lead them. Young people are getting us ready for worship. And I wonder if you will stand in prayer with your pastor to get us ready for the worship experience, not just on August 26th, but I am believing God that St. Luke will never be the same. Amen, somebody. I am believing for a fresh anointing to rest, rule, and abide in this house. I am believing that we are entering into a new season where God is going to do a new thing. Amen. And I just need you to stand in prayer with us. Amen. God has been good. Amen. Listen, it's prayer time. And I'm excited about the word that the Lord has given. And if you would, at this time, I just ask that you would bow your head and close your eyes. We want to prepare ourselves. We want to prepare ourselves to receive the word of God. Amen. This is the time where I come against every distraction. This, this is the time when I pray for, for divine revelation to enter into your space uninterrupted the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy when when seeds get planted it is the enemy's desire to uproot those seeds before they can take root but right now in the name of Jesus I'm asking you to position your heart your mind your soul to receive what the Lord has for you this morning so that you can receive some 30, some 60, some 100 fold of what God has in store for you. Listen, bow your head, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we have come to the time of worship. God, we live busy lives and our weeks are demanding. In fact, even this morning at challenges that seek to direct. But God, somehow we made it to the hour of worship God we haven't made it to this time just to go through the motions but we are here in this sacred space to hear a word from you and so I say speak Lord because your servants are listening speak Lord because we need a word from you and God my prayer is always simple Allow me to preach what I believe and to believe what I preach. Because God, if I don't believe this, then I have no business preaching it. And God, I pray for your people that they are not only hearers of your word. I pray, God, they would be doers of your holy word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. This morning, as we uh, prepare to, to hear from the Lord, I ask that you would turn your attention to the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter. Exodus chapter 17. And this morning, I want to lift for you verses 8 through verse 13, God's holy word. Exodus chapter 17. And I want to lift where you're hearing verse 8 through verse 13 as we continue in our series, Together We Can. I want you just say that this morning. Say, Together We Can. Amen. Come on, make that declaration like you really mean it. Say, Together We Can. Praise God. Exodus chapter 17, beginning at verse 8, the word of the Lord declares. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephet Edom. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. For tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. 
and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. Verse 11 says, as long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But when he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. I want to read that verse again. The Bible says in verse 11 that as long as Moses held his hands, the Israelites were winning. But when he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and, and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. Verse 13 says, So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Amen. For the time that has been uh, this morning, I just want to share with you from the short subject, hands up. Amen. Hands up. Um, this is, as I have stated, the third week of our series, Together We Can. On week one, we started this series looking at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, where God made the declaration that it is not good for man to be alone. We recognize in this passage that when God told Adam it was not good for him to be alone, that God was present. And even though God was present, God understood that Adam would need relationship in order to thrive. It's an interesting passage because it is the first thing in Scripture that God says is not good. God says it is not good for man to be alone. And then in week two, we, we begin to dig into uh, the various types of relationships and what we looked at was the relationship between Jonathan and David. We reflected upon how that friendship allowed David to thrive when the enemy was trying to take his life. We also looked at the power of John uh, chapter 15 where Jesus says, greater love have no one than this than to lay down a life for a friend. And what we ultimately discovered from last week is that friendship is an expression of God's love. Uh, the word friend uh, is, is derived from phileo, which is a Greek word for love. In the Greek, there are several different words that express love. And, and phileo is, it's a love that connects. It's often described as brotherly love, but it is a love that connects. And then we see in John where Jesus says, greater love have no one than this than to lay down a life for a friend that Jesus is referring to agape love. And when we look at both of the types of love that describe friendship and we put them together, understand that friendship is first something that connects you and binds you together. And then once you are bound together because we are imperfect beings, because we will miss the mark, because we will offend people, agape love has the ability to cover a multitude of, of sins. And, and, and what we discovered is that friendship is really an expression of God's love. And for our third week, I, I want to look at the subject hands up and, and, and what I want to focus on and I believe this is going to bless somebody. I want to focus on professional relationships. This, this, this is a word uh, for, for young people who are transitioning into the workforce. This is a word for, for those who have been working diligently, but, but you can't seem to find a way to get ahead. This is for anybody whom God has called and whom God has given a purpose to and you've been feeling somewhat frustrated in your purpose because you haven't figured out just how it is that you can find the key that unlocks the door to get you to where you need to be. And today what we'll talk about is, is professional relationships. And, and the truth is, 
I discovered the power of professional relationships late in my professional career. In fact, I, I had been uh, working for some 12 years before I finally discovered how important it was and how important it is to develop and cultivate and leverage professional relationships. Uh, I, 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 I came out of college and I, I came out of undergrad in 2004 and I started working and, and, and I was and I am a hard worker. But you have to know if you want to advance in your career, if you want to advance in your profession, it takes more than just being a hard worker. It also takes relationships. And, and, and it took me 12 years before I started realizing how important it was, listen to this, to invest, to invest into, into developing professional relationships. I, I remember it was, it was uh, around 2016. Uh, when I when I first started joining networking groups, you understand professionally, oftentimes when it comes to networking groups, the only way that you can get into those groups is to pay some type of membership fee. And that's why I said it, it took me a long time to realize that you have to invest. Amen. Somebody you have to invest in in developing these professional relationships. And and I remember participating uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a program in Fort Worth for African-American professionals, young professionals called Pass Forward. At the time, it was being led by a phenomenal woman of God, Tia Cole. And I remember going through that experience. And, and in that experience, they, 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 they provided you with some leadership training. And for me, the leadership training was was not necessarily groundbreaking. It was informational. It was uh, it, it, it helped to it helped to form me as a leader. But but it didn't give me major strides forward. But what the program did do was it did introduce me to meaningful relationships. It was not a free program there. There was a cost associated with going through the program. But but as a part of the program, you have the opportunity to rub shoulders with African-American influencers in the city of Fort Worth. I had the opportunity to meet uh, African-American uh, millionaires who who were businessmen who built businesses from the ground up, had the opportunity to meet Congress persons. And it was a wonderful opportunity, not not simply to meet those who were already established, but also to meet those who were my colleagues in the program who were aspiring. And those relationships, they they have blessed my life. And, and, and to this day, they they continue to do so. See, what you have to understand is that when it comes to professional relationships, there's a lot more to developing professional relationships than making sure that you have three solid references that you can put on a job application. To, to me, at, at first, that was the extent of it. If I had developed a relationship with someone to the point where I could use them as a reference, that meant that I had did my job and had done my due diligence in terms of developing professional relationships. But really, that just scratches the surface. And when it comes to professional relationships, a seed that was planted and, and finally came to fruition uh, was a seed that was planted way back in 2012 when I was at the barber shop. 2012, I was going to a barber shop in in Arlington, Texas, and the owner of that barber shop was 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 Spence and is Spence the barber. And whenever you go into the barber shop and Spence is there, you can almost be guaranteed that Spence is going to be talking about business. He he has a wonderful business mind and and one day when we were in the barbershop he he mentioned the term and the phrase social capital i had never heard the the term before and and social capital is is simply the idea of understanding that in business it's not always what you know it's not always who you know but it really is who knows you 
that 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 speaks to relationship and 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 when you are able to develop and cultivate relationships it it can open doors for you that you could not open on your own and so spence uh, began to talk about the power of of developing social capital and his story is particularly intriguing for me because he is not simply one that talks about it but he's one who lives it uh, Spence was and is running a business out of Arlington Texas but he's not originally from Arlington Texas he 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 made the move from Houston uh, first to Los Colinas and he did it because God gave him a vision Spence is a man of faith and he operates by faith and God put a vision within his heart and soul and he began to move upon that vision and that move it caused him to relocate from Houston to Los Colinas. Now the reason that he relocated Houston to Los Colinas is because God put in his spirit that he was to serve high end clientele. And so when he began to strategically think about how he would be able to position himself to serve high end clientele, the first thing he did was begin to look for stylists and begin to look for barbers who were already serving high end clientele because he wanted to develop a professional relationship with them because those who you are connected to ultimately determine the network that you move in and so when he was able to identify uh, 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 a stylist who who served high-end clientele his goal was not to become best friends his goal was to develop a professional relationship and out of that professional relationship Spence got introduced to align men for the Dallas Cowboys. He was able to develop that one relationship uh, and, and to the point where Spence became known as Spence the Barber of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he became famous for his $200 haircuts. And, and, and it was that, that Spence was able to navigate and he was able to, to be able to serve clientele that were high end. He was able to fulfill his goal because of a key relationship that he developed. Relationships, they, 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 they cannot be undervalued. A professional relationships that's what we're talking about today. They, they are the key to reaching your goal. Uh, understand that professional relationships they are in fact different than friendships as we talked about last week friendship is an expression of God's love and and that's the major difference between a friendship and a professional relationship the major difference is that a friendship is connected by love and professional relationships are connected by purpose or assignment and that's good for you to know you are developing professional relationships you have to understand that when you are developing these relationships you don't have to be friends with the people who you are developing relationship with you don't even have to see the world the same way the reality is what you need in a professional relationship is a common purpose and a common interest if you have a common purpose in a in a shared interest then there 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 is there are all the ingredients that are needed for the synergy that will help you um, uh, form a professional relationship that can help you move to where God has called you to be see when it comes to being I'm going to simplify this for you. Listen closely. If you're taking notes, this is something that I want you to take notes on. When it comes to being successful professionally, there are really only two things that you need to do. That's it. If you want to be successful in your professional life, there are only two things that really need to take place. You first need to have a skill, and then you need to be consistent. That's it. You don't have to for another course. You don't have to read another uh, two, three hundred page book. All you need to understand 
is that if you want to be successful professionally, you have to have a skill and then you have to be consistent in carrying out that skill. Uh, success then is the combination of performing a skill and doing it on a consistent basis. That's it. Success is simply the combination of performing a skill and then performing that skill on a consistent basis. Let me give you an example. I love basketball. I, I do. I, I love basketball. Not only do I love basketball, but I am skilled at the game. Believe it or not, I, 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 I'm not too shabby uh, when it comes to the game of basketball. I, I, I love the game of basketball. I can play the game of basketball. I am skilled at the game of basketball. But watch this, church. I didn't make it to the NBA. I didn't. Uh, it, it was for a long time a goal and a dream, but I didn't make it. And you might be thinking, well, Pastor, if you were just a few inches taller, then you had a better shot. I'm here to tell you it had nothing to do with my height. That, that, that was not the reason that I didn't make it to the NBA. The reason that Pastor Marlin did not make it to the NBA is because of consistency. It's real simple. Uh, when it comes to being successful, it is just a combination of skill and consistency. Listen, Steph Curry, he is a professional athlete. Pastor Marlin is not. Well, watch the comparison. Uh, Steph, Steph Curry, he can shoot. Guess what, church? Pastor Marlin. He can shoot. Yes, Steph Curry, he has the ability to score the basketball when he has a defender on him. A, a defender doesn't stop him from scoring the basketball. Church, Pastor Marlin has the ability to score when a defender is on him. Steph, Steph Curry, though, he can do it consistently watch out now y'all yeah, 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 better not be saying too much Steph Curry can do it consistently Pastor Marlin can do it on a good day amen somebody everybody can have a good day but, but having a good day doesn't mean that you can deploy a skill consistently see Steph Curry has the ability to be consistent over an 82 game season and well into the playoffs Pastor Marlin no matter how hard he tries cannot match that level of consistency see 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 what 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 separates the professional from the amateur is the, the their ability to perform the skill consistently Pastor Marlin is not in the NBA it's not because he can't shoot it's not because he doesn't have skill it's because he cannot do that consistently so the question is how do you how do you sustain your performance in your profession how do you sustain your performance in your career on your job for an extended time? Because when you can sustain your performance for an extended period of time, that is the recipe for success. And the answer to how you do that is simple. It's relationships. That, that's it. it. It is relationships. Relationships are the key to consistency see Steph Curry's job is not simply to shoot the basketball Steph Curry's job is to position his team to win games 
That's what his job is. And the truth is, Steph Curry is good at his job. In fact, he was a part of the team that has the most wins in NBA history. He was part of a team that was so successful at winning that they won 73 of 82 games. But Steph Curry couldn't do that by himself. He, he had to have teammates to pass him the ball. I know he can create his own shot, but, but he had to have teammates to pass him the ball. He had to have teammates that could set picks for him so that he could run off of screens. But, but most importantly, because Steph Curry cannot play all four quarters, because he can't play every night four quarters, he needs a team that has the ability to step up to the plate when he gets tired so that everything doesn't fall apart. Let me say it this way. Steph Curry can't win the game by himself. When he gets tired, he needs others to step up so that the team doesn't fall off. Next In our text today, what, what we get to see is how professional relationships help to sustain you so that you can maintain your performance over an extended period of time. To be successful is, is simple. It, it just takes skill and it takes consistency. That's it. To be successful, you just need skill and you just need consistency. But here's the, here's the thing that will challenge you. When it comes to being consistent, you have to maintain your consistency no matter what challenges you face. Ah, uh, Jesus, this, is, this thing start to fall apart for most people. See, you can maintain consistency if you never faced any bumps. You could, you could maintain consistency if there were no challenges that you had to overcome. But when it comes to being consistent, you must understand that nobody cares about your excuse. Ah, Jesus. No, no matter how difficult your situation might be, no matter how challenging it is, nobody cares about your excuse. Because while you are making excuses, ah, Jesus, you will be replaced. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. You, you have to have the skill and consistency that it takes to be successful. And when it comes to being consistent, you can make no excuses. But you've got to be ready to continue to perform in spite of the challenges that you face how difficult the opposition you have to maintain consistency and please understand that there will be opposition there will be opposition that comes in, in many different shapes and forms but you should know that there are certain people that will stand in your way there are certain people that will try to block your blessing watch this not because of who you are because of what you have so you have to stop taking all the attacks that you experience at work personal because really it's not about you but it's about what you have uh, people could care less about you but people really want what you have and the thing is they don't want to do the work that you did to get there they just want to take what you have and run with it See, there are people that you will come across, and, and some of you know this is true because you've been trying to figure it out, and you can't figure it out. There are people that you will come across who without a personal cause or without a personal reason will seek to block your progress, and you can't understand why for the life of you is out to get you uh, you haven't done anything to them you don't even know who they are but for some reason they are trying to block your progress uh, please understand it's not about you, but it's about what you have 
listen you think I'm making it up but really I'm right in the text verse 8 look at your Bible verse 8 says the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephed Edom this this by the Amalekites was un. this was not a retaliation they had no reason to come after the Israelites Israelites were simply progressing towards the promise and as they were progressing towards the promise out of nowhere they experienced an attack yeah Jesus out of nowhere they, they, they were attacked and, and, and even though they were attacked they still had the charge of progressing to the promised land. Can I, can I talk to you this morning? Uh, you, you are going to have to learn to maintain your consistency when life takes you by surprise and you start experiencing attacks out of nowhere. Uh, Jesus, this is, this is more Bible than you can handle. Let me give you some context. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, listen to this, verse 17 and 18, it reflects back on what's happening in Exodus chapter 17 Deuteronomy 25 verse 17 and 18 says remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt when, when you were weary and worn out they met you on the journey and attacked all who were lagging behind that's key and they had no fear of God see, see the Amalekites what they did was they attacked the rear of the camp. Now, some scholars suggest that the Amalekites did this because they were trying to get the baggage and the belongings that the Israelites had. And so the Amalekites, what they did is they attacked the Israelites simply because they wanted what the Israelites had. Now, the collateral damage of the attack by the Amalekites were that the women, children, elders, and sick persons uh, who, who were in the Amalekites' way, they were all killed so that the Amalekites could get to the bag. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Amalekites, one thing, they wanted to get to the bag. The Amalekites just wanted to get what the Israelites and they didn't mind destroying lives to get to it. Moses is. Moses is the leader. And Moses had to continue to lead through this attack. Moses had to step up. And Moses had to continue to lead when his job was under attack. And the thing that Moses did was to leverage a relationship with his assistant I'm right here in the text he leveraged a relationship with Joshua see understand that no matter uh, what your occupation is no matter what your profession is much like Moses you need professional relationship that you can leverage and help you especially when you're under attack Moses assistant and, and Moses told Joshua, Joshua, go, go get some men together and prepare fight. I want to pause uh, right quickly and, and, and just insert something parenthetically. You, you know, hi, ah, Jesus, and this gets me excited. Whenever you read the name Joshua in the Old Testament, it's always good to remember that, that Joshua when you translate that into Greek, is the name Jesus. Ah, oh, God. Jesus is the Greek way of pronouncing the Hebrew name Joshua. Joshua is, is a type. Joshua is a shadow and, and a foreshadow of Jesus who is the Savior. Now, the reason I wanted to pause right quick and, and insert that because I want to deposit in your spirit 
this morning that when you experience some unexpected attacks in your life, that when the enemy comes out of nowhere and tries to destroy you, that's the time where you can lift your voice and you can call on Jesus to fight the battle with you. You don't have to fight that battle by yourself, but you can call on the name of the Lord. And in a minute, in a second, Jesus will come down, stand side by side, and fight that battle with you. You ought to testify this morning that my God fights my battles. Uh, Jesus. Ghost, listen, you got to be encouraged. Got to be, got to be encouraged. Encouraged, got to know that, that Jesus will fight the battles with you. Now, listen, while, while Joshua was fighting, the Bible says that Moses made his way to the top of the hill. Because, because he had to, the Bible says, lift his hands. He, he made his way to the top of the hill because Moses' job was to lift his hands. The work that Moses was called to do was to keep his hands up during the battle. Moses was called to maintain a certain posture. He was called to maintain that posture consistent. Text, the text says in verse 11 that, that as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. As long as Moses was consistent, the Israelites were winning. But the Bible goes on to say, whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, there, there, is, there is significance. There is great significance to, to the posture of Moses holding up his hands. See, see the phrase uh, uh, held up his hands, it describes the Israelites' posture of prayer. Don't miss it to prayer today uh, when it's prayer time we we will we will kneel when it's prayer time we will fold our hands together when it's prayer time we will we will bow our heads that, that, that for us is a posture of prayer uh, but for Moses his posture of prayer was to lift his hands are you with me this morning St. Luke the, 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 the work that Moses was called to do was to keep his hands up in the battle. Now, now when, when Moses lifted his hands, it was his way of connecting to God. And all Moses had to do to be victorious was stay connected to God. All Moses had to do to be victorious was consistently keep his hands up because when he kept his hands up, he was connected to God. But verse 12 says that, that, that Moses' hands got tired. Ah, uh, Jesus. All he had to do to win the battle, keep his hands up, but the text says that his hands got tired. See, the job, the job of supporting the battle in prayer it was difficult. It was challenging. It was wearing Moses out. And because keeping his hands up was so challenging, because keeping his hands up was so difficult, Moses, he could not maintain that consistency. It, it was Moses' job to hold his hands up. But but that job was more than he could handle by himself. Somebody already knows. But he couldn't handle that by himself. It meant that Moses 
from relationships. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because Moses could not handle the work by himself. He needed some relationships that he could lean on to help him hold up his hands. See, last week I told you that, that, that friends, 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 they were the mirror that you're looking for but the truth is your relationships your relationships because it's not good for you to be alone your relationships they are the miracle that you're looking for in the text we find out that Moses had Aaron and her is that Aaron and her I like it they, they put a rock underneath Moses Ah, Jesus, I, I like it because that rock, it, it became a place where Moses could sit. Whew, help me, Holy Ghost. That means that, that Moses had some professional relationships that had the ability to put him in a position that would allow him to win. And they positioned Moses to win. The Bible says, they held up his arms. Excuse me, they held up his hands. And when they held up his hands, that enabled him to keep his hands steady so that they could win the battle. See, professor, you have to understand that you need someone, that you need some relationship capital that will help you position yourself to win. Moses had to pray. Moses kept praying. They were winning the battle. I'll say it again that what Moses is doing right now, it, it often gets overlooked. His hands up, and if Moses kept his hands up, then they could win the battle. If Moses kept praying, then they could win the battle, and that meant that as long as Moses was praying. The people were winning. And I just want to let you know this morning that you cannot underestimate the power of prayer in your professional life. To the altar, and you'll ask God to, to heal your body. You'll come and you ask God to, to move in the lives of your children, but you have to seek the face of God in your professional life. Let me share this with you quickly. I'm almost finished. A few months ago, I had a team meeting with my staff. Now, if you don't know it, Pastor Marlin is bivocational. I, I pastor here at St. Luke, but I'm also the director of services at, at Starry. And I was meeting with my team a few months ago because we were not building the relationships in the community uh, at the rate that we needed to to be able to provide the services that we are required to provide. And, and I had a team meeting for a Christian organization, so it makes having this conversation a little bit easier. But, but, but I had a team meeting, and, and I told them, I said, look, haven't been making and building relationships in the way that we need to, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something that, that I haven't really been able to tell anybody in, in, in this manner uh, because I haven't always worked for Christian organizations. I, I, I've had a great deal of success in my professional career. And the way that I've been able to be successful is because of God's favor. Amen. Now you be wondering what kind of strategy is that but, but I told them what we need is more than a well articulated plan what we need is, is more than, than some coaching I said what we need is God's favor and, and during this team meeting, I just began to testify about how God's favor opened doors for me. I, I shared with them how in my previous role, I, I, was, I was assigned a new territory. 
and I was assigned a new territory in a state that I had never been. I was assigned a new territory in a state where I didn't have any established relationships. And so the first time that, that I flew out to this state, I did my research online. I, I set some meetings up. I had some networking events that I was going to attend, and, and I got on the plane, flew uh, to, to Arizona. And when the plane touched down, I started to get my stuff from the and, and at the time, I was wearing a logo of the organization that I worked for. And there was an African-American gentleman who was there, and that African-American gentleman looked at my logo and said, hey, I, I love that concept. I, I love that idea. What, what is it that you do? And, and after we exited off the plane, I, I began to tell him briefly the work that I was engaged in and why I made the trip to Arizona. I did not plan to have this meeting. But as we were exiting the airport, we exchanged contact information, and I told him I would love to take him to lunch the following day so we could discuss this a little bit more. We ate lunch the next day. And as I shared more about our program, excited as he got excited he said you know what I need to introduce you to some of the African American influencers in this community that can get you connected in some schools help me Holy Ghost that 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 chance meeting on the plane turned into a lunch that lunch turned into a dinner where I got connected to two influencers in a state that I hadn't been in before and it was not because of something that I planned it was all because of God's favor help me Holy Ghost I told my team what we needed was God's favor we left that meeting the week when we came back for our team meeting all they could say is we made more relationships this week we got more progress this week than we had in all the months prior and we know why it is it's because of God's favor help me Holy Ghost I got hurry to an end to an end listen God God has continued to open doors in my role as director of fatherhood services at Story in fact in, 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 in just a couple of weeks it will be my one year anniversary help me Holy Ghost in just a couple of weeks it will be my one year anniversary but watch upon my one year anniversary I will no longer be the director of fatherhood services because our organization is growing and, and as our organization is growing the executive leadership team came to me and they said we love the work that you have done hallelujah in this program that was going in the wrong direction we, we love the work that has taken place and the impact that you've been able to make and, and we want to offer you a position we, we don't want you to be the director of fatherhood services anymore we want you to have a vice president's position and become a part of the executive team my God somebody out, somebody ought to say hallelujah somebody ought to say thank you Jesus and if you are wondering how is it that I can move in less than a year from a director's position to a VP position it's real simple oh Jesus so, somebody missed it let, let me give it to you again because if you're not shouting hallelujah if you're not doing right now something's wrong with you how is it that I was able to move up how is it that I was able to move on it's simply by lifting my hands and staying connected to God because the favor of God it will open doors for you and when my arms got weak God blessed me with a team that will hold up my arms so that we can get the victory ah Jesus I'm I'm finished finished I'm finished I'm finished one more point there's, there's one more point and if you give me two minutes if you give me two minutes you can shout in your living room you can dance in your kitchen you can turn your bedroom into a sanctuary a place where you can glorify God just give me two minutes and we're finished listen while Moses was praying for God's favor 
Joshua had to fight the battle. While Moses was praying for God's favor, Joshua had to fight the battle. Oh, Jesus. I'm saying this because I want you to know that, that prayer did not eliminate the battle that still had to be fought. What prayer did is it made victory possible. Prayer didn't win the battle. Prayer made victory possible. When you read your Bible, you find out that faith without works is dead. And I'm telling you this because I want you to know that if all you do is pray and not work, prayers will not work. If all and not work then your prayer will not work conversely if all you do is work and then your work will be in vain. listen I'll say it this way it's not enough just to pray it's not enough just to work but if you want the best that God has for you then you've got to learn how to and pray. You've got to learn how to pray and fight. You've got to learn how to fight and pray. You've got to learn how to lift your hands and stay in the battle. You've got to learn how to lift your hands so that the favor of God will rest upon you and then get back to work. And when you get tired and when you get weary, you can lift on your relationships uh, to keep you uh, in battle. Uh, listen, eye hasn't seen, uh, ear hasn't heard, uh, nor has it entered uh, into the hearts of men uh, for the things uh, that God has prepared uh, for those uh, who will fight uh, and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Listen, Oh, I wish this was August 22nd. I wish this was August 22nd. Ah, Jesus. But that's all right. Right right where you are in your living room. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and, and, and get connected to God right where you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to lift my hands. Did I'm going to lift my hands. God, give me the strength to fight. Listen, relationships make the difference. And Moses had relationship with Aaron and her. And those relationships helped him stay connected to God. They were connected by purpose. And don't you know, and in verse 13, him the victory. And when God gives you the victory, watch this. That's when you can rest. When God gives you the victory, that's when you can rest. My brothers, my sisters, and those who are worshiping with us this morning, if you don't have anyone fight your battles I want to tell you about a man named Jesus all you've got to do is call upon his name and he'll fight the battle with you listen if you you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus it's simple simple as ABC acknowledge believe and confess acknowledge that you are a sinner believe that Jesus came and died for you that on the third day he arose from the dead and then you confess him as Lord and Savior and then you become a friend of God if you are looking for somebody to, to hold your hands up St. Luke is a wonderful place hallelujah St. Luke is a wonderful place and we want to hold your hands up in this battle we don't want you to give up we don't want you to lose we want to hold your hand 
we want to place the rock that is Jesus Christ underneath you to give you a place to rest upon while we hold your hands so that you can stay in the fight. If you don't have a church home, I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church family, and we'd love to hold your hands up. Today, if you want to give your life to the Lord, just type the word save, S-A-V-E, in the chat box and we'll be in touch with you. If you want to connect with us, just type the word connect in the chat box and we'll be in touch with you. God has so much in store for you. God has so much in store for you. But you can't do it by yourself. It takes a relationship. It takes relationships because it's not good that man be alone. Listen, I'm inviting you all to join me in round two. And I apologize last week for being on the wrong Zoom call. I'll ensure this week that I'm on the right call so that we can talk about professional relationships. Look forward to joining you. Listen. If you would pause right where you are, I want to pray the benediction that will seal the word of God on your life. Devil, you are a lie. This word will take root. This word will come to fruition. And our God will be glorified. Listen, receive, receive the benediction. May the Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you see how I had to lift my hands? May the grace of Jesus, when I lifted my hands, that's declaring victory over the battles that you are fighting. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, hence now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.